Good morning, everyone. I welcome you to our service of our broadcast service from Holy Trinity Hillcrest. So we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ. And though we are not physically together, we pray that through our sharing in this act of worship, we may feel the presence of our Lord Jesus the Christ. And so we remind ourselves that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. During the season of Lent, we light this candle as our prayer for God's guidance at this time. Lord of light, be my guide this Lent. You are God who seeks us out and invites us to follow you. Teach us how to follow you best. Amen. Amen. So during the season of Lent, we remind ourselves of the commandments God gave to Moses and as a guide to our daily lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commands. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make an idol of anything and worship it. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make wrong use of the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not give false evidence. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet the possession of others. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So we spend a moment in silence as we call to mind the sins that separate us from God and from each other. God, you are good and upright, and you instruct sinners in your ways. Show us how to break down the barriers separating us from each other. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Forgive us for the times we have abandoned the poor, the disabled and the homeless. Teach us to live by the law of love in unity, peace and harmony. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Forgive us for the ways we exclude people of different race, culture or gender. Guide us that we may come to mutual understanding and care. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Draw us into your community to embrace those with whom we need to be reconciled. Grant that all who seek to heal divisions between peoples may have hope. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. Show us your ways, O Lord. Teach us your paths and guide us towards your truth. Lead us through the wilderness sin has created to find new life. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. 
pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning we read from John chapter 13 verses 1 to 16. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put him into the heart of Judas, son of Simeon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed, does not need to wash except for the feet, but his entire body is clean. And now you are clean, although not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. Here ends the reading. Sorry. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The modern buzzwords for today are locked down, self-isolating, quarantine, social distancing, sanitizing, etc. And all of them denoting that we should keep away from each other. Some medical professionals have stated that it is in our distancing from others that we will help reduce the rate of transmission. As we are beginning to experience for being forced into separation from family and friends has become extremely difficult. We are social beings, filled with all kinds of emotions which we use in our interaction with one another. These emotions are our God-given instruments as we relate to one another. The triune God is a God of love who commands us to express our love, that's our emotions, for Him by loving one another. 
The threat of contracting the coronavirus has placed upon us the challenge of fulfilling God's command in ways that are different to what we are accustomed to. As God's children, we are called to show love, express care, be compassionate, and exercise a ministry of presence which have always been about togetherness. We are forced to consider how we, at this time, can be who God has called us to be in a world that requires us to be a part. These past four weeks, we have been considering the meaning of risk as we reflect on the passion of Jesus Christ. This week, the theme is risking the loss of friends. The command to be a part and be separated from family and friends could threaten our relationships. The reading from St. John's Gospel tells us of the impact on the relationship that Judas had with his Lord and teacher, Jesus, and his fellow disciples. Now, all four Gospels render a slightly different version of events as it unfolded in the upper room. While the Synoptic Gospels have the same emphasis that the bread is Christ's body and the cup is a covenant in his blood, St. John's story, Jesus does not speak of the bread and the wine as Jesus' body and blood. The story centers on the events at what we call the Last Supper. Jesus and all his disciples were present. For St. Matthew, St. Mark, and St. Luke, we learn that when Jesus took his place at the table, he took wine and bread, blessed it, and shared it with his disciples. As we partake in it, he informs them that someone at table with them will betray him. This ignites some curiosity and discussion. All want to know who will do it. We can imagine the nature of the discussion, each one probably trying to impress the other about just how much they love Jesus. And I suppose a little exaggeration was thrown in, just like we often do. Eventually, it leads to a dispute about who is the greatest. Jesus then takes that opportunity to teach them about servanthood. The moment that Judas betrays Jesus varies. In the Synoptic Gospels, it happens when Jesus goes to check up on his disciples who were supposed to be praying for him. Judas appears with the temple guards and the Roman soldiers to arrest Jesus. St. John says that Judas abruptly leaves the table. Now, irrespective of the exact moment, I guess that it must have been a surprise to all his peers. Amy Levine says that according to St. Mark, Judas begins an, an exemplary disciple. On the road with the other disciples, he heals, he exercises, and he proclaims the good news. St. Mark gives us no reason for the betrayal. St. Matthew says, that Judas betrays Jesus for greed. He asked the high priest, what will you give me if I betray him to you? Luke claims that Satan entered into him. So according to the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus participated with his disciples in the Last Supper. St. John says that the devil planted the desire into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. So by all accounts, Judas was a friend to all of them. But for whatever reason, Judas severs the relationships and loses the friendships. We never hear of him again as a member of the group of apostles. 
See, the Gospels remind us of just how fragile relationships can be and how fickle we are. It is easy to dissociate ourselves from others who may not be like us physically, from those who may not think like we do, or from those who do not share the same interest with us. And in conditions like this current crisis, suspicions drive us apart. For others, there is guilt or disappointment in their failure to do something or for something they may not be very proud of. And so we begin to isolate ourselves, even from God. So isolation and quarantine may not just be for medical reasons. It can be for us a spiritual matter as well. So as we consider our readiness to risk friendships, we must avoid those inner voices of dissent which separates us from others for fear, judgment, and suspicion. In all four Gospels, Judas shares in the Last Supper. He is present in the synoptics when Jesus speaks of his body and his blood, when Jesus distributes the bread, and when Jesus announces that he will be betrayed. Judas, too, is made in the image and likeness of the divine. He is not a demon. He is a human being. Judas may have erred, but God would have forgiven him. Richard Raw says, God is a great allower. See, God allows us to stray. God never withholds God's love and mercy and grace. And knowing that we belong to God, and that God has a vested interest in us all. Let us, during these challenging times, not neglect one another by keeping apart. I therefore urge you to pray for each other, to call one another, to take care of the well-being of others. And then to remember, from dark clouds we get precious water, from dark mines we get valuable minerals, and from our darkest trials comes our best blessings from God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and compassionate God, at this time when we are urged to keep apart, help us not to sever friendships or destroy relationships of those whom we love. Give us the fortitude and courage to seek each other, to show concern for one another, and to care for others. Direct those who are working towards a cure for this virus. Strengthen those providing assistance to the dying and comfort to the bereaved. Comfort those, Lord, who mourn the loss of friends and family. And assure all who are struggling to stay alive of your presence. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who gave his life that we may have fullness of life during our stay on earth and when we enter into eternity. Amen. Amen. So join me now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. So, in making a spiritual communion with God, we remind ourselves that the Lord is close to all who call upon Him. Be still and know that I am God. And we pray, Lord, silence all voices in our hearts but His. So as we prepare to make our communion, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me. Almighty and everlasting God, we approach the sacrament of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. As sick we come to the physician of life as unclean to the fountain of mercy, as blind to the light of eternal splendor, as needy to the Lord of heaven and earth, as naked to the King of glory. So I invite you to repeat after me. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. Let me never be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to you. And with your saints, and with your saints I, may you I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So receive the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be among you and remain with you all.